Answering the call finds itself here in Yidda in South Sudan, a refugee camp home to about 70,000 people. In 2011, Omar Bashir, the president of Sudan, waged a war against the people of the Nuba Mountain. Thousands were killed, hundreds of thousands fled, and about 100,000 fled here to Yidda, which is now home to 70,000 of those refugees. Yidda has become not so safe a place. In fact, war rages on three fronts around this camp, even within about 15 kilometers of here. There were only services for 70,000, but for those 70,000, this remains home, at least for now. Yidda is home to some 70 different tribes, all of them a part of the Nubian people. They are a peaceful people, an industrious and hardworking people, a people filled with joy, even when confronting the dire circumstances that surround them. Here are their stories as they confront war. I'm from Kauda. Kauda is in Numba Mountain. I live there because uh, there was a crisis of war. People are not sitting comfortable. They can't eat because of the bombs. And also fighting, so people are dying. So, and also there's hunger because there's no food to be eaten because of war. So there was a time when I was in Numba Mountain. It was on Sunday. So after the church masses, when we were out from the church, so we were going to visit one of our friends who got uh, married uh, and uh, it was uh, a wedding. So we have gone to visit him. As we were in the, in the house, so the aircraft came. That was by four in the evening. So the, bomb, uh, the, the, the aircraft started bumping. That was in a village called Kuruchi. So from there it has bumped and I'd killed many people by the market. So a number of people were killed by the bombs from that time when we were there. And I witnessed uh, many dead uh, people, young children, old people, and even some of the youth were killed by that time. And my name is Sarah Musa. I born in Katia, in Nuba Mountain, since the war started in South Kordofan. The Antonov came and started bombing on us. We ran mountain to mountain. It came also to us in Dar. We came up to Jao and also is still bombing us. Up to now, there is no peace in Nubo Mountain, especially Darfur and Blue Nile. The tragedies of the past never seem to dim when contemplating a future that is darker still. Ethnic war in southern Sudan destabilizes the entire region, creating a scenario where the Nubian people have no place to go. With war unceasing, famine is impending. Medical care and other services will become harder and harder to acquire. Safety and security, no longer even a dream. Now the government of Khartoum has started bumping the Nuba Mountains, and it starts bumping the whole of Nuba Mountains, killing women, small children, and everyone back in Nuba Mountains. Here with the Nubian people, answering the call with First Baptist Pensacola as its primary partner, brought a strategy to identify what Jesus called the man of peace. Our objective here was to assess the area, get to know the Nubian people. Since there are 70 tribes here, we knew we would have opportunity to do that. We wanted to see, is it possible to bring medical shipments, food shipments, things that can assist the church? Is it possible to bring them in here? And so, of course, anything you can do here is based solely on the relationships that you're able to develop. To go and find the man of peace, and that has been accomplished. My name is Pastor Weasley. I'm here, I'm pastor in ECS Church. So, I am uh, in the Ida here. Two years and four months. Pastor Wesley is a kind guy. He's, he's a guy who's full of compassion. He's a strong leader, but a compassionate leader. You know, he's really a guy who doesn't have to be here, but he stays here because simply he wants to serve his people. Revered in the community, respected. He brings his people together. He ministers to them. He provides for them. 
and is just so happy to be in the Lord's service. Not suffering in the Lord's service, but joyful to be in the Lord's service in, in a place where maybe there shouldn't be joy in the world standards. He is a guy who's responsible for several churches here. He has a lot of influence in the community and knows how to get things done. He's exactly the kind of guy that we need to partner with here on the ground in order for anything to happen in the future. Since I saw him that I remember the teaching of Jesus when he was healing the sick and helping the, the congregation. Uh, since that, that time I knew him is uh, is really to, to preach the word of God and and also he knows the pain, the suffering of the people, and he is able to say for one week uh, with the members, the followers who are with him. Answering the call has brought and has plans to bring in the future teams from the states that can bring relief. As we have seen, one of the major needs here in Yidda is access to medicine and doctors. Answer in the Call and First Baptist Pensacola treated hundreds of patients giving much needed medicines. This is a refugee camp as opposed to ref fresh refugees coming back from Darfur, but yet they lacked uh, secondary and tertiary medical care for approximately 10 years. So although the ref this refugee camp has been present about two years, the medical problems go back further, such as I saw several children who had strider or wheezing every day of their life and they have a tumor or an obstruction, an obstruction in their trachea or subglottic mean below the tongue in this area. And they don't have an ear, nose, throat surgeon. They don't have the ability to get tests. I saw other children who were not being treated for schistosomiasis because the medical clinic's understaffed because of security concerns. And the international community has a medical clinic, but it's very difficult to communicate with the people because you have multiple dialects. My missions, I came back here in order to work and help the people. Uh, most of the sickness here is malaria cases. We have uh, diarrhea, which is one of the things. This is most of the diseases I'm seeing here, and also skin diseases. They are suffering because the services uh, is low, so uh, especially medical. There were times when the medicines were not enough. So a villager just came to our clinic, was, uh, we couldn't treat him medically. He probably has a, a day or a few days to live, uh, according to the doctor. Uh, we began to pray for him. Uh, and then he began to tell us that he had uh, he has a spirit that was speaking uh, death into his life. So we were praying with him uh, about that to release that. The team even saw God miraculously heal some who were sick. We hear a lot of stories about the Antonov bombs um, dropping and people have, uh, have had amputa amputated limbs and then it can split families apart. But through prayer, what we've, what we've come to find is God growing, one, a faith, and two, a love. Um, in them and in us. What we've seen in prayer is there's an awakening in the spirit and you can actually sense just this enormous um, incalculable love that God has for his people here and in the Nuba Mountains. Um, so we, we receive this, this hope from that love. The solution in Yidda and for the Nubian people lies not in the hands of the UN or other organizations. The solution, peace, will be found in the Prince of Peace, Jesus and His people. Isn't that what the church is supposed to do? Isn't it supposed to be everything to us? Not just this piece, not just that piece, but the whole piece. And that's what I see in the church here. And I think that's why it's thriving. And I think that's why the people are responding. I think that's why Muslims are coming to Christ because they see that Christ ministers to the whole, the whole person, the whole community. That's the church. For this reason, Answering the Call comes alongside the churches in this Nubian refugee camp, bringing encouragement from the Word of God, worshiping together, praying together. Among the Nubian believers, and in the heart of Answering the Call, resides the belief that Jesus is enough and that internal transformation 
brings change. We ask that you pray. We ask that you give, even sacrificially, so that Answer in the Call can continue to bring hope to the Nubian people. I think one of the primary messages here really is out of Isaiah 18. And you see right at the end of chapter 18 where the people of Cush, the people of the Nubian Mountains, are identified there. And it says in this chapter that they will bring their offerings to Jerusalem. There's a prophetic utterance that these people will not be destroyed. And that these people, not only will they not be destroyed, but their faith will remain intact and their faith will remain strong. And there'll come a day when they rise up and they take their offerings to Jesus in Jerusalem. We want to be a part of that. We want to be a part of what God's doing in the lives of these people.